As you probably heard, uh, uh, we've made some uh, announcements yesterday uh, with respect to uh, changes that will affect the energy sector. And uh, when we were here in Drayton Valley, we said, look, as soon as we make a decision, we're going to be back uh, to visit with you, uh, to hear from you, and see how things are moving along, because uh, there's no doubt about it. We're going through some very difficult uh, challenges uh, in our economy, not only within the country of Canada, but in the North American continent. So the one thing that I'd like to talk about, of course, is, is the changes, but also why we're taking the steps we are. Now, some people would uh, have you believe that uh, yesterday's announcement was all about changing the royalty framework. Well, that's not really the case, though royalties are a large part of it. But this uh, whole endeavor is more than royalties. It's about competitiveness. And as uh, Diana had mentioned, it, it's not just talking about the cost, but looking at the overarching industries that we have in the province. And small business, obviously, is part of it. Diana mentioned uh, forestry, agriculture. Uh, there's the financial institutions. What can we do to prepare uh, to attract more financial institutions to the province of Alberta over a length of time? So looking at the, the more of the broader theme, it's really about what, what do people want to see in their province? How can we in, invite him here to, to invest, to work, to visit, retire? Well, there are high quality services, obviously health education a clean environment, but most importantly, opportunity. And we've seen people come, we have a net migration, huge net migration of people to the province of Alberta. And the reason they're coming here, because they can sense there's opportunity in this province. And we want to make sure that that continues to happen. So as we're going through this uh, difficult period, recession, we rolled out a very uh, comprehensive four-point economic plan. And that is uh, uh, covered in part as uh, Diana mentioned, Bill 1 in the, in the legislature, the current sitting, the Alberta Competitiveness Act, that's going to take us even further in this area and making sure that uh, we're the most competitive jurisdiction in North America. So part of uh, four goals for the government as we work through uh, this difficult period, and that is to be in the best financial position of all provinces. And I can assure you that this province will lead Canada out of the recession. We also want to have the most innovative and competitive economy in North America, the best performing health system in Canada, and the most advanced infrastructure in North America. Now, economic growth is crucial to all of these. You can't have a, a good quality of life with, without continued economic growth. It's really what gives us the high standard of living that we enjoy and provides, as I said earlier, healthcare, education, infrastructure, supports for the vulnerable, and most importantly, the, the other things that Albertans value in the community, from arts to culture. So what we need to do today uh, is look at every industry and to make sure that uh, we are in a competitive position. So the first industry, obviously, is oil and gas. And why? Well, it's very important to our province. And uh, a recent paper from the University of Calgary found that uh, if you took away royalties, just the royalties, not the activity, but just the royalties from the provincial treasury, Albertans would need a provincial sales tax of approximately 16% to keep the current level of programs in the province of Alberta. Now, royalties are a small part of the picture. That same report found that without the energy industry, Alberta's economy would be less than half its current size. So clearly, the uh, energy uh, sector's legacy in Alberta is a tremendous one, and the potential for the future is just as significant. The Canadian, research, the Canadian Energy Research Institute, which again is a, it's a third party arm's length, has forecast that over the next 25 years, uh, uh, Alberta's oil and gas industry is, is poised to con contribute about 2.5 trillion to Alberta's GDP. Now that's trillion uh, with a T. And uh, <clears throat> shouldn't say this, but at least at this, this side of the border, we're looking at trillion on the positive, and <laughs> south they're looking in the negative. So, with with just that, just those few facts, you already see that uh, this industry is vital of significance to our province. But we are facing challenges in the industry, and many of these are long-standing. Of course, we can't do anything about our northern climate uh, exploration 
seasons are short, and we're far away from U.S. markets. We have mature fields. Some of the low-hanging fruit has all been picked. But add to that reduced energy demand, lower prices caused by the recession, and ex an explosion of shale gas in the United States, and you can see why Alberta's competitive position has been eroded. We're losing investment, we're losing market share, and we need to address that for the good of the province, not only for today, but for tomorrow. There are things we can change, and things uh, that we're going to do immediately. And one is the regulatory system. And yes, we need rules to protect the environment and to keep Albertans safe. That isn't the issue. But they need to be the right rules. And they, they need to make sense, common sense, when we apply them. We have to have a good regulatory system, but we have also added a lot of layers over the years. And it's, you know, it's not only province, but there's some issues within municipalities and with federal um, regulatory regime as well. And, and as you know, uh, Wes here, or even here in the town, you want to put a culvert, you want to, you know, you got, you got Alberta environment coming, then you got fellows from Ottawa, you know, that are looking for fish in the dry pond and stuff. And, you know, and all this takes time, it adds to the cost, but I really don't think it makes any difference at the end of the day. Because some of those rules, as I said, don't make any sense. So, it's been, uh, it adds a tremendous burden of time and it adds a lot of cost to companies. And I know, I know, because out there it was at a municipal level and a provincial level, sometimes you add conditions to a development permit just to keep the two parties happy. Does it make any difference? Is the project safer? No. But you're just adding really cost. And it doesn't matter how small or large the development. You'll find that uh, conditions often applied at the last minute to get something through a regulatory authority ends up costing the company. But at the end of the day, it actually costs all of us. So that's one thing that we're changing. Diana McQueen, as Parliamentary Secretary of Energy, has been assigned a responsibility. She'll be working with Evan Berger uh, and Cal Dallas. And I want to stress that uh, we're working through these uh, changes. They're not to lower our environmental standards. Albertans have always placed a very high value on our environment and the health and, and safety of, of Albertans. That's important, but we have to look at the whole regime and to make sure that we streamline it so that we have a heck of a lot uh, res, less red tape, and we will do that. The other area is um, opening the door to innovation. And I know we have a lot of oil and gas people here, suppliers, and you know most of the ideas, uh, at least according to my brother-in-law, who's now retired, he's going to be uh, turning 80 here next month, but uh, a lot of the innovation in the industry came from you know, common sense, uh, some of the farm boys that came to the rig and thought up of really good ideas, they converted um, and helped the industry uh, reach, you know, different gas finds, oil, and really improve the technology in the industry. And uh, this industry is, uh, is really struggling because there are technological innovations that have really unlocked massive, massive shale gas deposits in the United States. We have those unconventional deposits here in Alberta. That's not the issue, we do have them. And innovation will help unlock them. Uh, and uh, just like, like it did the oil sands. Remember uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago, people said, well, we won't have the research and we will, uh, we will never develop them because they're too remote, too costly, etc." Well, today I can tell you, it's uh, the number one royalty contributor to Alberta is uh, from the oil sands. So what we have to do is to make sure that we have uh, find efficient ways of operating, making the most use of our resources, using energy very wisely, and uh, make energy development more environmentally responsible. The other area is, of course, making some changes to royalties. The royalty framework in 2000 and now, uh, that was announced in 2007 still stands, but we have to make some changes in conventional oil and gas. There needs to be a better reflection of today's circumstances. And uh, also, look at the true costs that uh, the energy industry is going to, to see in terms of improving and building new technological changes as we uh, unlock these brand new resources. Well, the first thing that will happen is that uh, the maximum royalty rate for conventional 
um, unconventional natural gas um, will come from the higher price levels from 50% to 30. Uh, oil will come from 50% uh, uh, to 40. And the reduced temporary front end rate of 5% on the first year of production will be made permanent for both oil and natural gas. We'll also be changing the graduated royalty rates, uh, the, the curves using the current price and production variables. Now, these will be finalized uh, sometimes by the end of uh, June, because there's still, a, a, or sorry, by the end of May, because there is still a lot of work to be uh, done in consultation with the industry. Making these changes uh, will mean giving up some revenue at the front end, but I know we're gonna make it uh, back in other ways, especially in land sales. Uh, we've had a very, very good land sale. I believe the largest uh, 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 land sale we had earlier this year was huge. And they also uh, mentioned yesterday in Calgary, you don't get royalty paid on gas in the ground. You get paid on what is produced. And the other is, uh, and I know it's a very complex area, but as our production has dropped off in Alberta, it's affecting the petrochemical industry because we don't have enough ethane to strip and, and um, make polyethylene out of it. And the other is, as their volumes drop, tariff rates increase dramatically. So the cost of getting the gas to the United States has increased. And that, again, is all of the other factors that impinge on the profitability in this sector. I uh, know that jobs are very important in Alberta. Nearly one in seven Alberta jobs is tied directly or indirectly to this sector. And uh, when, a, when a company drills a well, the economic impact, it ripples throughout Alberta. It brings uh, employees to small communities. Uh, rental of rooms, uh, you know, the gas station in Breton, I'm sure, is going to see some more business, the tire store, all of these are going to see improved activity. And, of course, uh, shopping in, uh, in, in the local stores in communities like this as well. Each well drilled supports 120 jobs. And these are people who actually spend the money in the economy. 60% of our economy is consumer spending. That's what drives the economy. And, and when people don't spend money, they keep in their back pocket or don't have the money to spend, that's what really slows down the economic growth. I uh, want to uh, just say that the world has really changed these last couple of years. I did not ever personally predict that we're going to go through such a huge recession worldwide. There has been a tremendous economic global shift in the world. And it hasn't happened, uh, at least not in my memory, well, it hasn't really happened in our history. We've been fortunate to see the most consecutive quarters of, of economic growth in Canada through the 80s and the 90s. But it has changed. Our number one trading partner, the United States, is feeling some real economic pressure. Huge debt load. And of course, as we were talking earlier, some of these trade barriers are coming up again. Uh, the country of origin labeling and agriculture, some of the forestry issues that we're still dealing with in the United States. And of course, I think a country that's going to have to pr protect their economy in, in some way uh, and rebuild, and we're gonna have to be very careful in working with them. So as we look at uh, not only changes in the oil and gas sector, we will be working with industry to make sure that we have another outlet uh, another market for oil and gas, and I can tell you that we're, we're going to be working with the federal government and the private sector to build a pipeline to the West Coast because we can't tie the next future to one country that is going through some difficulty today. And with that, I uh, just want to thank uh, the community for once again coming out today. Uh, uh, I just uh, want to thank you again for the hospitality. Um, this is a partnership between really Albertans who are owners of the resource. The government is kind of the steward, uh, trying to find the best uh, balance. But you, the people who actually put up the risk capital. And uh, that's where the partnership is. And uh, I know that uh, with these changes and others that are coming uh, in other industries, we're going to reposition Alberta and usher in a new area of growth uh, in the province of Alberta. So with that, thank you so very, very much.